हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू ऑनलाइन स्पोकन इंग्लिश क्लास इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी शैल लर्न अबाउट द सेंटेंस वी यूज लैंग्वेज टू कम्युनिकेट अ लैंग्वेज इज फॉर्म्ड ऑफ वर्ड्स अरेंज इन एन ऑर्डर विच कम्युनिकेट्स अ मीनिंग इन डीड आइसोलेटेड वर्ड्स डू हैव मीनिंग but to communicate we have to use them in a specific order this is what we do in a sentence to make things clear look at the words below delicious mangoes are do you understand any meaning out of these jumbled words perhaps no we'll change the order of words and put it this way mangoes are delicious yes now it becomes a meaningful sentence which tells that mangoes are delicious fruits look at another example reading a book is Arjun Does this group of words make any sense? No. It does not make any sense. Let's arrange the words in a proper order and say it like this. Arjun is reading a book. Yes. Now it does become a meaningful sentence. Let's see this example. love i country my this group of words also does not convey any meaning but when we arrange these words in a specific sequence it conveys a meaning i love my country please repeat after me the following key points a sentence is a group of words which makes complete sense a sentence always begins with a capital letter A typical sentence may have subject, verb and object as its elements. We just read about the elements of a typical sentence which are subject, verb and object subject arthat karta verb arthat kriya object arthat karm the subject tells about the person or thing we speak about verb is an action word and the object is generally a noun that is needed by the verb to give complete sense Let us understand this with the help of an example. The boy hit the ball. In this sentence as we see, first comes the subject, then comes the verb and then the object. So in this sentence, the boy is the subject, hit is the verb and the ball is the object. we can take one more example smita eight and orange here smita is the subject eight is the verb and an orange is the object speak these sentences after me and notice the difference 
the tea is in the cup. The cup is in the tea. First sentence is absolutely correct and conveys the correct meaning which the speaker wants to convey. But when we say the cup is in the tea, did you notice the difference? The meaning of the sentence is changed and it does not actually convey what the speaker intends to convey. Now look at the other two sentences and repeat after me. The monkey is on the tree. The tree is on the monkey. Here, the first sentence is correct, but when we say the tree is on the monkey, here the listener may get confused and he may think that how can the tree be on the monkey. Here, what I want you to notice is that the selection of words and their placement in the sentence is very important to convey the right meaning. We saw in the previous slide that if right words are not put in right order, the sentence does not convey proper meaning. However, sometimes even if the position of a word is changed, the sentence still conveys a meaning. For example, the table is on the mat. The mat is on the table. Here, both the sentences convey their respective meanings. Similarly, when we see other two sentences, the water is in the pot. The pot is in the water. Here also, both the sentences are grammatically correct. So, the purpose is to draw your attention that we have to be careful regarding the usage of right words at right places. Before we move ahead to the next module, let us see what we learnt in this module. In this module, we learnt that a word or a group of words which expresses a complete thought is called a sentence. A sentence always begins with a capital letter. A typical sentence may have subject, verb and object as its elements. In the next module, I shall deal with the parts of a sentence. Thank you and goodbye.